If we go to agenda item one, which is a welcome and introduction, and I'm delighted to be able to say that we've got with us tonight, Councillor Kevin Guy, who's the leader of Bath and North East Somerset Council. Thank you, David. Uh, yep, yeah, I'm Councillor Kevin Guy. I'm the ward member for Bath Avon North, and as, as Dave's pointed out, I'm also the leader of Bath and North East Somerset Council. Um, one of my portfolio areas is community engagement, and I once this idea of a, a Bath Forum was muted to me, I was very keen to see it uh, develop and come to fruition. I, I used to be the chair of Bath Avon North um, Forum, which is very successful in bringing together different parish councils. Obviously, there's a wider debate about the, um, the future of representation within the city of Bath, and that's something I, I'd be interested to listen to your, you guys and find out your views on that before obviously uh, moving forward to maybe possibly a wider community engagement. So it, it's really important that you guys express your views uh, and you are in charge of the agenda of this forum. That is really important. It shouldn't be dictated to by ourselves in, in the council. It's about the people of Bath giving your views, your points, what's important to you guys. Uh, and then we can obviously develop that as an authority with all the partners as well. So welcome to the inaugural Bath Forum. Uh, and, and, I'm, and I believe we've got examples from chairs of other forums that are going to talk after me now and explain to you how their forums will work. And maybe that's a basis to move forward from this particular meeting. So on that note, I will pass it back to Dave and I'm sure we'll learn more about other forums now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Councillor. Uh, we've got, uh, we're delighted we've got two guests with us uh, this evening. We've got uh, Chris Head, who is the chair of the Chew Valley uh, Area Forum. And we've also got Ron Hopkins, who is the vice chair of the Summer Valley Area Forum. And uh, they're going to give us a little, um, a little insight into the area forums and how they operate. So for instance, the Summer Valley one has been in existence for probably about 12, 13 years and Chew Valley is probably not very far behind. But if I hand over, I think Chris, you're going to go first and Ron, you're going to follow in behind Chris, I believe, is that right? Uh, thanks, Dave. So uh, hi everyone, uh, I'm bringing greetings from the outer reaches of the empire. Um, uh, we're right out in the, uh, the, the western extremities of Bath and North East Somerset. So Chew Valley has had a forum, as, as Dave says, for about 12 years. Um, my day job is I'm the chief executive of the West of England Rural Network, which is uh, we work with rural communities across the whole of the West of England, so that's Baines, North Somerset and South Gloucestershire, things like village halls, community shops, community transport schemes. So we work very closely with rural areas. We also run a village agent scheme as well, which some of you may well have heard about. Um, but we've been running or been working with colleagues on the forum for, for that length of time. And uh, interestingly, I'm one of the few forum chairs. I think I am the only forum chair who's not an elected member. So I'm not either a parish councillor or a district councillor. Um, and that um, is something that um, allows a bit of sort of neutrality, not that we have much partisanship in the Chew Valley uh, anyway, but it's sort of a, it allows a bit of independence. But just one of the things that we just wanted to say was that really the, the role of the forum and the role that we were trying to fulfill, and I think with the help of colleagues in the council has been really successful, is that we try and work on topics or projects or things of interest that aren't covered either by your elected members by your ward members or even by the council as a whole so they're specific about the sort of the geography that you're in so they're quite geographically focused so it could be around things like transport it could be around things like flooding so for example in 2014 there were some really bad floods in the Chew Valley and one of the outcomes of that piece of work which we all got together to sort of to address was the Chew Valley Flood Forum was set up which is now an independent organization and works with things like insurers and other organizations to to take on flood issues but if one parish council had taken that on so if Chew Magna for example which was possibly one of the worst hit had taken it on by themselves other parishes within the catchment wouldn't have taken stuff forward so actually by taking it forward as a Chew Valley wide project that was really really helpful. Similarly transport is something that's actually been really helpful to take as a, as a forum project because again if you dealt with transport on a small area by small area basis 
actually you know you've got very individual topics but actually overall it doesn't sort of really add up to very much but coalescing it all together is really important the other thing that we've done which i think is important for this group is you've or, sorry that our forums don't have any sort of financial uh, uh financial role so in other words we don't have any budgets we don't um we, we're not involved in spending public money and because of that it means the nature and the way and the governance structure that we can work is much more flexible and much more adaptable i think previously um when the sill money was needed to be distributed within bath you had a separate setup because actually you had to distribute distributing public money and that was a different different role the non-distribution of public money means we can be much freer and much more um yeah, much more flexible and agile in what we do and how we work. So I think those were what I those are my main key points, really. Um, I think Ron's going to talk a little bit about the Soma Valley. But my one my final point really is that good chairmanship, um, as we in all, in all of these things, and I'm probably talking to a room full of people who chair meetings, so you're all very used to it. But being chair of a meeting like that is really important to keep to, to make sure that you've got a grasp of what is that needs to be dealt with at a forum level versus what needs to be dealt with at a ward level or even a neighborhood level this is about taking stuff at quite a big picture stuff and that's really quite important for the forum i think uh and, and we're i'm quite happy to take questions after ron has has spoken over to you ron thanks chris thinking i think everybody it's nice to be sitting in front of such glitterati from bar um and uh, we're not quite such an outpost in the community as perhaps the rural beauty of the, of the reservoir and things like that. But um, it's important to note that um, the Summer Valley Forum has developed from being just a group of parish councillors, which, which Kevin Guy was referring to earlier. And when people have brought guests along to the forum, We've always been very conscious and, and, and recently very conscientious. And Sarah has invited a lot of people to come along that are just members of the public or members of the community in their own right who had an interest in a particular subject. So consequently, our, our Summer Valley meetings until the dreaded COVID came along um, were growing and growing and growing almost exponentially. Um, and that brings me on to the real function of it. Um, first of all, I chair many meetings because I'm a, a member of the CVI and uh, and do things like that. So I do understand that, but I'm actually vice chairman of the Summer Valley Forum. And uh, what's interesting that, that uh, when David invited me to come along and talk to you is that um, I was elected onto the forum as vice chairman. Um, and then th six weeks later, Along came COVID, and um, Sarah and the team did their best thing and, and basically um, closed us down, if you like. So I'm in the unique position of being called vice chairman, but actually never being to a meeting as a chairman or a vice chairman. Now I've been a member of the forum for many, many years, and um, I'd like to make a few. That, that gives me a unique insight, really, in that. I'm not sitting on the top table looking down. I've I've been in the I've been in the, the stalls looking up. So um, I'll tell you what I see this. Um, I'm a councillor, so I became the representative of Westfield Parish Council on the Summer Valley uh, Forum. That's how I got in originally. Um, but I've watched this growth of private individuals and private community members and leaders for a variety of places joining our forum. And it's clear that it's provided a, a, an impressive conduit from these people to express their views, not only to their parish councillors, but also through to the, the, the Baines officers that spend a lot of time in the evening, frustratingly for them, listening to us. And that's developed a nice level of cooperation, which possibly wouldn't have been there had they been stiffly marching through the the steroid ranks of, of the parish councils. So that's the important thing, the flexible communication, both in both directions. 
and uh, the, the, the factual fact of getting to know people, which has allowed the office officers to have a much more personalized, uh, a much more personal view of the situation in our forum. And I think that's absolutely essential. And with the Bath's rather unique uh, position of not being parished, um, I think this forum for Bath will be even more, more important than you can ever start to anticipate. Um, and a, as a, communi a communicative path for the, 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 the members of the public in Bath, as well as the local, let's use glitterati again, that's good. So it's a means, a conduit through which people can talk. And I strongly recommend it. And I'm happy to um, answer questions as we go along. Thank Splendid, you. thank you, Ron. Thank you, Chris. Chris, you've got anything else that you wish to add from anything that Ron has said? Um, I, I only add, yeah, that I didn't add in that bit about like Ron says about actually more and more people have got engaged in the pro in the in the fora. So we have doctors, we have people from residents from the for, or people from the schools, we have you know local business people come. It's a, it is quite a mixture of people and again depending on what the agenda is and the way we tend to set the agenda is we normally tend to have one larger item which is something that you know have a couple of speakers on or a couple of people presenting on and then we have a bit of a discussion the thing that i've tr i've tried to push really hard back against is uh, count, uh council officers just using it as an easy way to consult with a larger group of people if they want to do that, they're they're quite at liberty to come along and do a sort of a five minute pitch. But I, you know, quite often I won't take allow questions, or they'll need to respond separately to that because it's it's not that's not what this is about. This is about us dealing with local issues and local uh, local priorities um, at, at a forum level. So those are the those are the only things I think I'd want to add, if if possible, after after Ron is okay, Dave. Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. I mean, what I would just say, just obviously as an officer that's been involved with the council for uh, ooh, over 25 years, actually, um, the Bath City Council disappeared in 1996 and was never replaced by anything locally on the ground that actually reflected the needs of perhaps some of the residents of Bath, particularly in the suburban areas. Uh, and I knew that from personal experience, having been one of those people living out at Newbridge for about 15, 16 years, often um, it was much easier to get things across to some of your parish councillors if you had a very strong parish or town council and another layer of uh, a layer of democracy. Um, and the other thing that I would say, which I think a lot of you would probably agree with, who've been around for a while, that the city over the last 30, 35 years that I've been here, uh, some of it has changed out of all recognition. Um, and sometimes there has been a feeling from local residents and local organisations about having an opportunity to influence some of that change and actually to get involved in some of that decision making and perhaps put their views across. And that's one of the things that the forums have been very good at doing is actually collating some of that some of that general information and giving it a giving it an avenue by which, which which to go down so i mean this is the first meeting of the bath area forum and we've changed the name for a reason it used to be called the bath city forum but that makes it feel like it's all very city center focused and actually we don't want it to be city centre focused. I want to concentrate on the suburbs. I want to know what the people of Lark Hall or Twerton or uh, Fox Hill, uh, you know, or Newbridge, uh, we we need to know what they what what they what what they're thinking and what they're feeling. And sometimes it's very difficult for ward councillors who've got a very excessive workload anyway to almost undertake the role of local parish councils on top of that and deal with some of the details, some of the issues. So that was the idea. So we've called it the Bath Area Forum because it's about the areas of Bath. And if any of you have been here for any considerable time, you know that those areas are different. We know they are. We know we've got huge diversity across our patch, across the city as a whole. And it's trying to give all of those individual groups and organisations um, an individual voice in, in, in what we're doing, which is the, you know, the current administration's, one of their primary aims about connecting all those communities all together. 
And the, and the question is often asked, as uh, we know, if we had a Bar City Council, would we need a Bath Area Forum? And the answer to that question is probably yes, more than ever, because, again, you need to get the views of those local people. And bearing in mind some of the younger people, again, and we've got a large student population, uh, which, again, we need to reach out to and we need to engage with. And, and hopefully, again, that Area Forum will be able to do it. And the other thing that we've tried to do with the Area Forum, which we didn't do with the City Forum, with the old city forum, it, it consisted of 13 elected councillors and then 13 co-opted members that were almost had to apply like it was a job, which didn't make it incredibly in inclusive. And what we wanted to do, which is what we've done, we think, with the other area forums, is that they are completely inclusive. It doesn't matter who you are or what you do, whether if, even if you're just simply a resident, that's a really important role to play because you've got a really important viewpoint on how your city is run and that's why we're trying to do this with this area forum so it's a very relaxed start to all of this and this is a forum that will develop over time and as having been involved with a number of them for many years i always say to people you've got to start somewhere actually this is where we're starting it will develop over time if you don't like something then raise it make a point make a case and if enough people want to change it we can change it because that's how these partnerships develop. Uh, they're very, you know, they, they grow over time. The Summer Valley Partnership is a very good example how it changes over time. So, Dave, Dave. Yeah, sorry, Chris. So, and so one of the things that the forum can do is they can set up working groups. Yeah. So a good example of that, just building on what Dave just said, is the Chew Valley one that agreed at its last meeting, it was pre-COVID, to set up a climate and nature emergency working group. So this wasn't something that was being done by the forum. It set up a separate working group, which had a 10-month shelf life. And we've extended it because of COVID, but they set up a separate working group that engaged even more people in sort of specialism and special working stuff. Yeah. So it's like, a bit like the flood forum thing. It's the same thing. It's that idea about setting up working groups. And it allows you to have that flexibility to, to, to really to pull on people's specialisms and interests and get them involved in the right kind of way. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, no, no, that's fine. Thank you, Chris. And I mean, I think the other thing that we've- Ron, Ron's got his hand up, oh, but on sorry. mute. Ron, you're on mute. Ron, you're on mute. Um, yeah, fascinating points, but um, please excuse me if I'm not being politically correct when I say this, and I'm sure Councillor Guy and all his colleagues on this will know. Out, out in the sticks, um, there was, uh, this may stick in people's throats, there was an awful feeling at times that we were very Bath-centric and that um, a lot of the political effort was centred around the city mm. uh, to the ignorance of the locals. And the forum gave an opportunity, it gave a pathway for people to say to people, hey, we're over here and, and this is our problem. And that's nonetheless for smaller areas of a big city i mean i am an edmonton guy from london so i know what it's like a big city um, and all these communities are separate and this forum will give those communities an opportunity to talk to the officers yeah no you're absolutely right ron and i think one of the things that certainly we as officers and i think the councillors all agree is that sometimes often the best uh, people to solve their own problems are the communities themselves and i think a lot of that has been shown certainly in the last 12 18 months with what we've all gone through um, and again here at the community wellbeing hub we've been delivering uh, food medications uh, food parcels medications emergency supplies and to all sorts of different people and what we found is is that some of the places where they're very well organized parish and town councils or community groups or food banks they have been absolutely unbelievable in, in, in that grassroots support, which without that support, the council would never have ever been able to have delivered to the numbers of people that we had, you know, in, in all sorts of problems. And one of the things we're hoping to do, again, with the forum is to identify the strengths and weaknesses in some of the individual areas that are so, that, that, that are so different at times, and yet sometimes have got a really collective framework of individual uh, individual needs and the other thing I think as a council that we've realized is that some of the some of the really big issues that we are going to need to deal with we are going to have to do it with you as a council with your support with you helping us so if we talk about carbon agenda climate climate change and that kind of things 
the council can do lots of things, but it can't do it all. And it can't do it without the help and the support of all the communities and all the organisations that are all pulling in the same framework. And we're seeing that in the northeast Somerset area with some of the parishes about, um, you know, their, their climate emergency um, guidance and some of the stuff they're trying to do with individual villages where everybody's trying to make an individual effort. Because that is, again, is the only way that we're going to deal with some of these really mega issues that are going to affect all of us from now for the foreseeable future. Uh, I've got a question that's come in. Will the Bath Forum have additional powers and will another body that is separate be set up? Um, the Bath Forum won't have, I mean, Chris has already mentioned that. So one of the things with the forums in the sense that they don't have, they don't have any powers as such. The only difference with the Bath Forum between uh, Bath Area Forum with the others is that Bath, the Bath has its own neighbourhood SIL funding, Community Infrastructure Levy Funding. That's what that stands for. That's basically developers' contributions. They make a contribution. The vast majority goes to the council, but the neighbourhood element goes to uh, in North East Somerset, it goes to individual parish and town councils and they, descend, they decide how it's going to be spent. In Bath, there is no Bath City Council. So the uh, the old forum set up a panel that runs the Bath SIL. And to give you some idea about, uh, about funding elements, we've given away about £1.3 million so far to all sorts of different projects all across Bath all supporting local residents in delivering some of their needs as part of the developer contributions. And again, that will continue. You've only got to look at some of the very large developments that are currently on the books and are taking place in the city to know that we're going to get additional sale money. So that's the only, but apart from that, there are, there are no, there are no powers because we're trying to make it as inclusive as possible. We're trying to get as much information as possible from people in order to be able to influence some of the organizations and the individuals such as the current administration into for them to get a feel about what actually people want. Sorry, Chris. Questions? Did somebody, sorry, Chris, did you have your hand up and ask for a question or not? It was Chris Humphreys. Oh, sorry. Not Chris Head. Chris? Chris Humphreys. Where are we looking? Somebody was somebody had a hand up for a question. Nic okay, Nicolette, okay. I can see. I can, if, okay. you, if you if you use the little hand raised logo, then you pop up to my top left hand screen, and then I can see you because uh, I'm going over two screens at the moment because there's uh, 33 of us. Yeah, Nicolette, yeah. can I just correct you? It was um, Cerise Humphreys who wanted to. Um... Oh right. Okay, Cerise. Cerise, if you want to go first, and then I've got Nicolette, and then I've got Councillor Joe Hurst. Joe okay, Hurst. so. Um... Yeah, all due respect, you didn't really quite answer my question, um, because if you take parish councils, they, they actually have, they are statutory uh, re, uh, consultees, for example, in planning applications, yeah. and that, in that sort of area, all sorts of areas like that, um, yeah. they have uh, powers uh, that, that are held within the parish areas that are, for which there is the equivalent within the city of Bath. Yeah. And so my point is that actually there are all sorts of things that we do not share. So we either um, should, it, it should need to have those powers um, within this body when it's set up, or what else will you do to ensure that the residents of Bath do actually, at some stage, um, attain equality of representation to people who are out in the um, parish areas outside Bath. Thank well, you. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, um, could I, could I, could I, could I respond to that one? Because I think yeah. it is, it is quite fundamental. Uh, which, which is this thing where you, the forums are not there to replace your existing structures, your existing things that you have in place, and whether they're ward councillors or the, the central, you know, the Baines Council, that's really important that they don't overlap and don't duplicate that. So the, the forums have been around things like talking about homelessness or about mental health or about, uh, I say, flooding, you know, other issues that aren't around. And it, in, in, because as soon as you start going down that route of talking about planning and talking about those kind of, those issues, there are other fora for doing that which are much more better placed for doing it. And there's something about expectation management. It's really important to make sure that you use your elected members to do that appropriately. 
you know out, out in the rural areas and in the in the urban, in the towns where we do have parish and town councils you know there are separate admittedly there are sort of separate bodies doing some of the work but by and large the issue about whether bath is parished is not a question i would suggest for the forum it's a, it's a slightly bigger political issue than that and that's again something you don't want to get sidetracked by and i think that's quite important to make sure you don't get sidetracked Yeah, thank you, Chris. I've got Nicolette, I've got Councillor Joel Hurst, and I've got Councillor Tim Ball. So, Nicolette? Um, yes, I wanted to pick up, um, you up on how, how do you actually ensure that um, uh, the people, and particularly all different types of people, do set the agendas rather than them, them being imposed from, by officers or or those in the centre, you know, the, like the transport lobby or a particular transport lobby in, in, in the centre of Bath, because I can see that being a problem. Yeah, uh, it, with the other forums, how we how we've done it is a gentle process of sort of erosion, if you like. On occasions, we uh, on occasions the council imposes too much of its agenda top down and gets pushed back. Uh, and then we we retreat and then on occasions we get too much up from the grassroots uh, and we push back at the same time and it is it is it is actually a continuous reevaluation of actually what are the pressing issues for what local people want balanced against the fact that sometimes there is stuff that the council needs to get across to people and the forum is a quite an effect the forums are quite an effective way of doing it so is there's that constant tilting of the balance the pendulum almost backwards and forwards and it's just a question of continued communications to be honest i think and engagement that's what it's about and and i and i would say and, I, and it's kind of a he would say this wouldn't he uh, but being a non-elected member in other words not being a parish councillor not being a wall councillor i'm able to have a bit more of a neutral view about what we you know what's going on and what's not happening that's not to say that it's different for ron and people within other the other forum most of the other i mean my vice chair is a parish councillor from another from a, a, one of the parishes but it's you know it there's something about it is this check about whether it's it should be being dealt with elsewhere and about keeping that balance right and mm -hmm. i think it's it is a tricky one Nicola, and i think it's there isn't a sort of uh you know we have had some little rabbit holes that we've gone down every now and then but i think by and large once people get used to it as a forum and you know and again we did have in, in the rural areas we don't we really don't genuinely do not have much political activity at all but one one forum meeting we got um uh, we got taken over by the labor party in in you know this was right back in the early days and they thought they were coming because they wanted to influence something. And actually, you know, again, we were we were it was quite a tricky meeting, but actually it was it, we were able to manage it and we were able to deal with that. And again, in terms of the terms of reference, which you, you've got a copy of in your papers tonight, you know, one of the things is about allowing, um, you know, that sort of making sure that non lobbying happens and that actually is, you can cut through it and I think it's quite a, it this is why it needs active management sorry Ron and I saw Ron's hand flip up there as well so but you need to take yourself off mute though Ron yeah mute it again Ron yes Nicola you're quite right to bring bring the matter up because it is important we have on several occasions had shall we say pressure groups mm who have tried to dominate uh, the meeting to get a point over. Uh, and in the early days, uh, that used to be um, the, 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 the environmental lobby and that kind of thing. So you need to be, it needs to be managed and chaired very carefully and notes made and promises of investigations and, and future agendas put forward. But Dave and his team are always very conscious and a glance across lets you know that there is a problem which is being which is moving outside the framework of the forum so it, it can be controlled yeah councillor joe hurst uh yeah thank you uh, and um first of all i, I just want to really welcome getting this up and running and off the ground because I, I i think it it feels like it's been a big missing for a while uh, and that there hasn't been an opportunity 
for residents to come here and participate and and feel like their views are listened to. So I I, I think that's it, it's a fantastic thing that we we've, we've got it back up and running and and we can build on it. And I totally get the the conversation that, that was had that that does still need to be had. I think still needs to be played out around the debate around parishing or not parishing or whatever. But but I think the two need to be uncoupled. But I think I think that conversation does need to happen, and I'm hoping that 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 as as COVID hopefully wanes, that 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 the the officer team will have time to de devote to kind of moving that agenda forward as well, and thinking how we're going to play that debate out because it needs to be had, and it kind of feels like at, at some time at some points there's a kind of a feeling of injustice. So I, I drive into Midsummer Norton and Westfield regularly, well every day because uh, I work down there. And notice the investment that because you are able to raise precepts and the like, the investment in flowers, in in the open spaces, uh, in street cleaning, which which just we are not able to do in Bath because we haven't got that precept raising ability. But I know also then on the flip side that there's an injustice around the funding arrangements and and that effectively sometimes NES, NES uh, residents feel like they're being double taxed. Uh, uh, for roughly the same level of service, so I, th I think it does need to be addressed. But um, particularly, I'm I'm kind of key. I, I think it's important that we focus on on things like the open spaces and 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 just the engagement with the residents. And so, having an agenda which will be attractive and will bring people to the forum, and and making sure we've got the right vehicles to promote the agenda and tell people. Uh, that it's happening and kind of build a momentum around it is really important. So I think those are the key points I was wanting to raise at this stage. Thank you, Dave. No, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hurst. Councillor Tim Ball. Yes, thank you. I've been knocking around for a few odd years as councillor, as you might know, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Um, to work from residents, hated Avon County Council. They hated Bath City Council. They all thought, basically, they were being done down on at this end. Um, basically, not like Bath, not like Council either. Um, and with the, with the uh, Elwood Bar City Forum, when they thought they had been interviewed to get on the forum, it had, a, had an insult to injury, basically. It was embarrassing, really, what happened with that particular forum this way. I welcome this one, where it's coming back now, where residents will just be able to attend openly, with not having to be elected to anything. That's what I'm looking forward to. My question, though, and this is the difficult one, you may, you may not want to answer it tonight, Twerton is thinking of doing its own neighbourhood plan at the moment. And this is the first time you've probably heard this tonight. We're actually, I've advanced into our conversation with local residents are taking it forward. That means we have to have a neighbourhood form locally to, to, mm. to have that vehicle to actually run. How does that affect the Bath area form if we're running that below you? Um, thank you, Councillor Ball. That's a really, really interesting question. I'm not quite sure. I mean, obviously, uh, I've been heavily involved and the team have been heavily involved in neighbourhood plans across North East Somerset with various parish and town councils, but they've already been designated uh, areas of a parish or a town council with its, with its own boundaries. I'm not quite sure how that would work with Twerton within and where you would draw those existing boundaries and how that would work. Because obviously Twerton, I, I should imagine many, many, many years ago, Twerton was parished, I think, like uh, like Western Village was, was in Lark Hall. Yeah. So presumably you'd go back to the original historical boundary. We were looking at the actual ward boundaries as it currently exists at the moment. That may change as our conversations take place there. Can I... Um... Tim, yeah, can I just, just uh, again from the uh, Independent People's Republic of the Chew Valley, um, <laughs> just remind you that that uh, seven parishes did a joint neighbourhood plan in the Chew Valley. So you know we've done a we've done a much larger uh, uh, neighbourhood plan. You know so and and again the way that works is there is a the 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 seven parishes share the common pot the additional ten percent sill money that you get from having a neighbourhood plan. There's a sort of a central committee yeah. um, that shares that. Then each individual parish still gets their fifteen percent of the seal money. But again, I think you know it, it's how th these things sort of naturally evolve and naturally develop. And and you know actually a neighbourhood plan will take many years to actually come through to fruition. 
So I, I would say it's, that's a really exciting step and actually might sort of might might allow other areas to feel that they can come through and produce a neighborhood plan yeah. but i would say that's a sort of a you know again that's like you know the par whole parishing thing it's just on a parallel track uh, and i wouldn't let that sort of get in the way of, of of what's happening here but but you may well find it once you start doing it into work and other people want to do a neighborhood plan as well yeah i mean that is a really useful question tim i mean one, one of the things that we would one of the things that chris has just mentioned which would be a big issue is that uh, your neighbourhood uh, sale contribution goes from 15% to 25% if you have a neighbourhood plan. Uh, and with the money that we're talking about in Bath, we're talk that, that would be a significant increase in funding. But how that would work exactly with the developers uh, if it was just in Twerton and not in elsewhere, yeah, I don't you, know, we'd have to look at the detail. It, was, it becomes really complicated. You would, you would need to be careful because you, you would only get the money then that was within the Twerton neighbourhood plan area. Yeah. Yeah. You, at the moment, you're benefiting from it across the whole of yeah. our area. I've, I've had a couple of, I've got, I've got Nicolette, I've got you there on the top left hand corner. Ron, I've got you as well, but I've got uh, a lady, uh, Shiva Page, has asked a couple of questions. Shiva, are you there? Are you on my front screen? Ah, yes, there you are. Hello there. You asked about inclusivity, wouldn't you, and about how to get groups involved in the forum? Yeah. And also the powers that the forum would have and how diverse matters would be heard and acted upon. Yeah, sorry, I know nothing about forums. I'm just a resident. No, um, no, no, no one's, no one's just a resident. Okay, but I've been trying to get lots of questions answered through the normal channels. Um, I just find that a lot of the time they're not answered or, um, yeah, I just, I just find it hard to have my voice actually heard. I'm an unwell person myself. Um, I also work with disabled people. So I've yeah. basically been kind of trying to advocate for those areas. But yeah, I don't I don't feel like I get heard. And if I do get heard, I, I just get told, well, this is the way it is. Mm. Sorry. Mm. So I ju I'm just wondering like what the forum can do that the residents can't do without the forum. Um, can, I, can I give you an example of one of the things? So in response to that, we had a issue around uh, 16, 17 year olds getting to school. Uh, and so they were on, um, uh, once they get into the sixth form, they have to pay for transport. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the rural areas is going to school on a bus and has to pay for transport. There's very few people who actually can cycle or walk. Uh, and we had a group of 16, 17 year olds come to, and present this issue to the forum. Um, and so and, and from that, there's been some action has been taken forward. And I know that um, Councillor Sarah Warren is, is involved in some stuff around that at the moment. But that was a really good. That was a good example where people who wouldn't normally attend a council event mm -hmm. actually came along and were, were heard and were able to, to speak. Now, we had to make specific arrangements for them to get their transport because there is no public transport. So they had to be bust mm -hmm. around so you know again that just highlights an issue in itself so i think you know if, if you're working with disabled people that would be a great great one to have we had another one where we had um uh, a family of of someone who was a drug addict came and talked to the meeting it's not the same as having someone who is a drug addict but actually it was actually more appropriate for the family of that person who was a drug addict to come because actually more far more people could relate to what the issues that they were having mm -hmm. were. and it was a that was a really powerful and a really moving session and we had uh half we had about half a dozen elected members there at that meeting as well and they were all uh, moved by what what they heard and i think some actions were taken following that so it's actually quite a, it's it's quite a good space quite a neutral space to take that forward so okay. ron is busy wanting to yeah, no, that's, that's that's great i just like i said i just want to make sure that as many voices especially yeah. of people who are busy or who may not have access to the internet or may have to work night shifts or might have lots of children at home or yeah. might have a disability themselves i just i just wonder how they actively get represented yeah i mean it is it is around inclusivity and somebody's mentioned the idea about uh, potential working groups around general themes that people would be really interested in because you know there's a lot of work that could be done there certainly across the whole of bath and we do need these local communities to be able to deliver some of that work and, and drive some of it in their own community and where it works well it works really well but at the moment it's a bit of a patchwork quilt effect we we need to try and raise the standards by by just 
by by just you know explaining to other groups and organisations what can be achieved if a number of residents get together. And because we've got the neighbourhood sale funding, we do have pots of money that we can support some of those some of those activities if they're relevant. Before uh, I was unwell, I used to work in the communities with children and teenagers and families. So I know I know I've, I've personally been involved in schemes where it worked amazingly well because we went and spoke to all of the families and we got everyone involved. So if it's going to work like that, then that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, Alison, Alison Herbert, you asked something about, uh, I think, yeah, I think Ron. oh, Ron, I've got Ron and Nicolette, um, but yeah. I'm going to come back to Alison as well. Yeah. Okay, David, thank you for that. Um, I, I've got a stack of things I want to come back on. Just a, We'll try and do them in reverse. Sort of. Talk about Shiva, first of all. Shiva, uh, hi. You're, what you're saying is exactly the point that I was making. Um, minority groups, individuals even, with a problem, have a means through the forum of accessing the, um, the, the poor old full-time officers of Baines that just really haven't got time to phone everybody and call everybody, but it's an opportunity. Luckily, I'm... I happen to be a, 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 um, a parish councillor of a very aggressive, very progressive and award-winning parish council. We have got some in this area, so thanks to the team, Dave and his team. Um, and we tend to make a note of people's questions, like, for example, the ones you made. And then we sort of, in the nicest possible way, hound Sarah and Dave and her team make sure that we've got something and somebody from our forum will actually will actually approach you and tell you what's happening um, and suggest you come along and talk at the next meeting and i'm sure that, that could happen in bath as well okay yeah um, and and councillor tim ball tim um i was the chair of westfield parish council's um, neighborhood plan group um we spent two and a half years building and planning our uh, neighbourhood plan uh, and all the neighbourhood consultation, which happened right down to Boy, Boy Scouts level. And it's a vital task, not, not just uh, not just from the, from the point of view of getting more sill money, and that, that can be unravelled, that will be unravelled in Bath. But it, the, the communication involved and the planning, and anybody, you drive through Westfield, I think you said, um, quite often, the results have been spectacular since we've done it. We've been disappointed a few times where planning has been strained and uh, planning permission has been called in and that kind of thing because of the, some of the things we've done. And we've clashed with Baines a bit, but we've always managed to compromise. And there's no doubt that the neighbourhood plan is a fantastic opportunity for you to, to plan the future of your society. So have no fear about that. Go ahead with it. If you want to talk to anybody about how, how we did it, I'm very happy to meet you at any time. So there you go. Well done. Brilliant. Thank you, Ron. Alison, you had a question, I think, was it was it about parishes? The question about parishes? No, should... no I, I just thought, um, <clears throat> it, <clears throat> sorry, it was odd that um, the first issue that, Ke I don't know how you pronounce your name, sorry, but that Keris raised was like, oh yes, this is a free forum and we can discuss anything, oh, but not that. Um, and so I and I don't think it's necessarily a political question. The fact that Bath isn't parished might be something that this group might want to discuss. That was kind of what I wanted to say. And then but so I was just backing her up, really. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, and then um, uh, but then looking ahead, your agenda is quite structured and you've put some huge meaty topics. And so like Wecker coming and talking about transport. Um, and it's not until February that that you're going to you're proposing to discuss the terms of reference for the group, but you've already kind of set the agenda before you've decided what the group's for. Um, and I know we've discussed like how it great works in other areas, but again, because they're parished, it's a slightly different question, I think. Um, and maybe if we are going to look at it in a sort of citizens assembly, very inclusive manner. We actually ought to be asking this group and beyond this group, um, what, what they think or what we think this group might be for and what sort of kind of things it could so we've kind of answered the question of the problem before we've agreed what what some of the problems might be and so I sort of feel like 
really it would be make me feel a bit more kind of comfortable i guess if 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 we were start it on its path but maybe that you know maybe that's the kind of that's your clever devious plan is that you try it for six months and then in six months time we go well we know that we don't want to do that anymore we don't want to be the place where Weka come and do a speech we want to be the place where local people come and tell us what the problem is with the bus timetable that means that they can't get to work or whatever you know do you know what I mean so yeah no no def definitely and it's I know Roger I have got your hat I see your hand and I'm, I'll, I'll come to you now in a second but uh, yeah you're you're absolutely right it's but it's that question about the uh, the evolution of a forum you've got to start somewhere this is where we've started if you don't like it you can change it you can change your forum at any time which is what all the other forums have done uh, and the other issue that we've got is around striking a balance really between some of the stuff that needs that we need to tell you and some of the stuff that needs to come from the grassroots app so the weka thing is interesting but the weka have got a very tight consultation time frame which could have a quite dramatic effect on some of the residents of bath and so they've asked if in a sense if they can sort of bolt that onto the next meeting so it's either that opportunity of we either take that engagement opportunity or we lose it so but we're always going to be like i said it's always going to be a seesaw about finding the balance Roger. Dave, Dave, what I would just what I would just add and just support what Alison has just said in that, and this is what I've where well, you know I always push back on you know people from the council coming and telling us what's going on and you know thinking they've done a consultation. I would actually much rather if if that was on my agenda and it's not because we're not on the A4, uh, would say right, let's find a couple of groups who who are transport users or or you know so whether it's just people with disabilities, whether it's young people whether it's people commuters i don't know just finding some people and then getting them to come along and actually getting the WEC people to hear them rather yeah. than the WECA people to tell us what they're doing and yeah. i think this is the opportunity and again part of the pro part of the thing that you've got to and again it's part of expectation management about this thing um you know online we try and keep them at an hour and a half when we were doing them in reality um, we were doing two hours because you know you need a couple of you know you need a little bit of time to get, yeah. get things going but actually, in an hour and a half, you're not actually going to cover that much stuff. You know, you want to be really realistic. And that's why, you know, things like having a long discussion about something which actually someone gets completely sidetracked down a little rabbit hole about something in particular that they're really interested in. This isn't the appropriate place. The forums are not the appropriate place for doing that. Yeah. But they're much more appropriate for having that wider, wider perspective and and enlightening others about what's actually going on, about what others' experiences are. And I think yeah. that's really important. Yeah. Roger, you were you you yeah. hand up. Thanks, thanks, Dave. Sorry, I didn't know how to put up the yellow hand. So I was, <laughs> I was looking, I was looking for it. So uh, <laughs> I it. so I know thank you for that. I, I'm I suppose I'm I'm partly really intrigued by um lots of the the inputs here because I'm trying I'm sitting trying to work out, you know, um what the what the objectives are, but also in a sense, why now? But also I'm interested in some of the interchange of language that's been taking place. So both Ron and Chris. One just said, just told us, he, you know, he's a parish council or has been, and Chris is, has been or was or interacts with parish councils in the forum, and they're using a lot of that interchangeable language. So they're clearly showing a clear relationship between forums and parish councils. And then I do, I do know some of the councillors here, and I know they work really hard, but when I hear someone like Shiva saying there's a frustration because they don't know where to take things, mm. well, I actually think those are our democratic structures, and if, if there's voices saying... The existing structures we don't know where to go um i know our councillors have to hear that and then try and work out how they can make that known and it's almost like um now i suppose if i am grassroots i'm saying grassroots please can you inform us what a parish council is or town council is and what it can and can't do and then alongside what a forum and then we can make an informed choice or decision about whether we want to go both routes or have both. I noticed Somerset Council, if it's called that now, there's been an amalgamation, hasn't it? And Taunton, if yet. I... Uh, ta well, OK, but I was... I've been... I think if I've read this right, Taunton were the only non-parished area. So to bring equality, they're actually creating a town council for Taunton. Now, I'm, I'm, I, I think that's interesting. They've obviously debated it, looked at the detail... And think that that's a very good thing to have. So I hear what Councillor Joel said, 
you know, that I think so, you know, good on you that, you know, you start, start the ball rolling. So let, let's in, grassroots, please inform us of what, you know, the ins and outs, and then we can actually look at it. And then from grassroots, we can then say, yeah, actually, please, can we have, could we have several parish councils for the city? I don't know. Hearing Tim from uh, Twerton, they may actually, can we parish? Because that, that provides us with a structure uh, that they can work with. And maybe we have three parish councils. Yeah. For blast. Do you see what I mean? Oh, yeah, um, yeah, no, definitely. So, definitely. So, please, so good on you all. But at the start of the debate, give us more information, please. Um, I mean, I think that's more a uh, not necessarily an officer answer. It's probably more a political answer to start with and uh, is driven by the politicians and the officers then enacted. I don't know, Councillor Kevin Guy, I don't know if you've got any comments that you want to make about, about any of that. I've lost him off my screen. No. Oh, no. Hi, 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 Dave. So, sorry, I missed most of that. I was, it, was, it was mainly static. But what, what was the question? It was just, just a question about basically about parishing and about parishing of Bath. And it's something that's been raised, you know, before around community governance reviews and about how how if the forum was looking to be going down that route, how that would be how that would be achieved. And, and it would probably be I think Roger's idea probably would be about you need to know what we've currently got, what the forum can currently achieve, and then actually what a parish or a, a, a good parish or town council can achieve and show the differences between the two and actually show, I suppose, the roadmap about how to get there. I've been involved in a community governance review for Bath and North East Somerset Council. We have done one. It was to dissolve Norton Radstock Town Council because the local people down there, there was a general feeling that it probably wasn't uh, achieving quite what it could have done. And it split into three, it split into Westfield Parish, which Ron comes from, uh, Radstock Town Council and Midsummer Norton Town Council. Um, so we can do it and it is achievable, but it is a, it is an expensive and it is a uh, it is quite a long winded um, um, project because obviously you've got to uh, you you need to ballot the individual residents to see if they're actually willing to to, to want to go down that route. Yeah, I would agree with that, Dave. I think what, what is important with that particular topic, because it's so important and it's about quality representation, that it should be uh, the people of Bath that lead that debate and it, it, we, you should remove politics from the entire conversation yeah. uh, and, and let it evolve naturally w what is the best style of representation for the book of what works in theirs what can be learned from theirs uh, and, and let this forum develop that idea in a manner that, and, and look at exactly like you say Dave look at other areas that have had to struggle with this particular issue and see learn from their mistakes uh, and, and move forward from there but I, I personally feel that any politics should be removed from this topic totally yeah. and allow it to develop naturally. Yeah. Uh, Roger? Can I say, well, uh, thank you, Kevin, uh, for that. And uh, you may have missed a little bit of what I said, but then in a sense, let tonight then be, let's start the ball rolling. Because we're saying, I I'm someone from grassroots saying, yeah, inform us, give us the information and then start to disseminate. And over the coming months, we can then look at the forum, look at parish councils or town council, you know, across the city, and then we can do that. So I'm making a non-political remark. Um, so I, I think give good credit. Thank you for starting this rolling. I think that's good. And then this is a recording, isn't it? So people can see it yeah, clearly yeah. come. It's clearly come from grassroots. Yeah. So good on you. Let, let's start the ball rolling. Right. Um, thanks, Roger. I've got uh, Nicolette, and then I've got Keris, and then I've got Ron. So Nicolette. Um, I just want to make a quick comment to Kevin Guy before I actually ask my my question. Or um, I completely agree that um, the Bath, the people of Bath, need to um, steer what happens. Will we will we want to parish and how we what sort of parishing structure we want? However, I um, my experience of watching was because I was a Bath City Forum member for a bit and watching what goes on is actually parishing the the politicians all have various vested interests about whether they or do or don't want a, a strong city council. Um, so my question is, can the the, um, the, the Bath councillors actually stand back and really allow the people's voice to come through? Um, uh, and then I'm just going to quickly ask a question, been, which is more of a, a technical question, which I think you, somebody might be able to answer fairly swiftly. Um, 
at the moment, Bath is unparished and we've got the SILF, SILS monies which need to be allocated. And how is the, the Bath form going to do that in a very inclusive way? Or are you going to sort of carry on having a subset of the Bath forum, um, looking at potential projects for the, the SILS money to go to and doing it? So how, how will the SILS money be um, distributed? Dave, you want me to answer that? If you want, if you want me, I mean, at the moment, Nicola, I mean, obviously there is a subgroup from the old Bar City Forum uh, of uh, councillors and uh, non-councillors who meet on a regular basis, who uh, look at the projects that have been put forward and decide whether or not they can be funded after they've gone through our legal and our financial um, hurdles. And, and then that was reported back to the old Bar City Forums. Now, the idea with the new area forum is to probably continue that model, uh, but but almost not start the process again, but also but to just explain the process to everybody, to say that there are representatives and to and, and to ask if there are people that are interested in taking part and meet in with Mark and I on a used to be three monthly basis to decide what got funded and what didn't. That would be the way that we would do it. Yeah, I, I mean, my concern was that it wasn't that inclusive um, when we had the Bar City Forum, and uh, I just would want some reassurance that when we had the, the Bath Area Forum, that individuals who do want to get involved in that can. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. And I think also the other things that individuals could do, which we did with the with the panel, is that they could sponsor individual projects. And, and before it was tended to be done by councillors, but there's no, no reason why a local resident with a really good idea couldn't put together a project proposal to go to the panel and say, do you know what, my area needs £25,000 on this. Can you fund it, please? That would be really quite inclusive way of doing it. And I think that's really empowering for the... Know, the sort of community groups and I completely hear what Shiva was saying and um, about groups which have probably really got a really strong community need but they can't um, get firstly they can't get a voice and yeah. then to actually be able if they could get a voice and then actually channel some of that still money towards a solution to whatever the problem is yeah that uh, would be really great for a bath area form but it's not going to happen no. It won't happen unless um, it won't happen by accident because no, they're, 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 they're sort of um, who knows who those people who are making all the decisions on the project. Yeah, 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 no, no, definitely. But I mean, that is a that is a longer term conversation that we need to have. And I mean, if, if you look at some of the local councils that have been set up quite recently, Salisbury was one. So when Wiltshire County Council disappeared and became a unitary, Salisbury was parished for the first time, which is not that many years ago. They've got a budget, three, four million pounds a year, which they spend specifically on Salisbury. Um, and if you do get a chance to look at their website, it's really quite interesting to see what they do. Western Supermare was another one, but that Western Supermare was a crusade by one individual councillor for something like 15 years to get Western Supermare parished. And in the end, he finally got it. Karis, you had your hand up. Sorry, I, I didn't see you there. Um, yeah, it was really just to um, ask if when we could expect that you would start to have um, in-person meetings, um, because I think although we might like to think of ourselves as being uh, grassroots, um, we might not be terribly representative of Bath, I suggest. And I do think that there has been a tendency um, in various council meetings and consultations um, to uh, underestimate the number of people who are actually excluded by things like digital exclusion yes. um, and all sorts of other other reasons. And yeah. um, I, I do, uh, yeah, so really that's the question is when, when can we expect there to be in-person meetings where, which also mean there are, there's less of a barrier, perceived barrier between us and the people who are on the panel? Yeah, I mean, at the moment, um... At the moment, the issues around venues and, and numbers that we could we could expect. So on a on a on a on a good area forum meeting or an old bar city forum meeting, there may be fifty or sixty people. So it would have to be in the banqueting room. And again, it's just whether or not people are comfortable being in one room together with that number of people at the moment. So to be honest, I can't give you that answer. But what 
we were talking about, I think, when it comes up in the poll, is about how do we look at those meetings formats going forward? Do we do them face to face in a big room, in which case it would have to be the Guild Hall because it's only the room big enough? Or do we do a hybrid or we do virtual? But we'll we'll talk about that in the poll. I've got Shiva and then I've got Ron. Hi, sorry. Um, I was a bit confused about the not political thing. I understand that a forum needs to be independent and not kind of political, political like that. But surely if we're speaking to local authorities about the things we need in our community, then that must kind of come up against the politics of whichever administration are in charge at that time. Yeah, I think that's a, yeah. I think that's a question for a politician and not an officer. I don't okay, know. Kevin, okay. Kevin, are you, are you just, in there? No, no, I'm just like um, a couple of other people have said, I'm just concerned. At, I don't know anything about forums. I've never been in a forum. So I'm coming from a place of complete lack of knowledge about what what I'm expecting from this or what any of us are expecting from this. And my main priority really is to make sure that underrepresented people not just people who um, can't go on the internet, but people who are working shifts or just don't have time, don't know what's happening until it's actually happening and it's too late for them to do anything about it. And it, the time frame is gone where they can have their input. And I feel that that's what I, I'm worried about at the moment. And if this isn't starting till another three months, then we can't influence what's happening now, can we? No. No. Um, Dave, do you want me to quickly jump in on that? Yeah, one? Yeah, that, it, yeah, it's a good point. And when I say remove politics, I don't necessarily mean remove politicians because ward councils in Bath are integral um, community activists and community representatives and community members. So their views are very valid and should be inputted within this forum. But when I say when I remove politics is that the ideas and the shape of this forum should be formulated from the grassroots up. So what you think are important and are big issues and you think really need to be done and achieved within the Bath area, then this forum can come forward with those ideas and then present them to people like myself who are elected to executive office and then we can implement them uh, on your behalf. So it shouldn't necessarily, there's plenty of ways in which myself as the executive can impose the will of a political group upon a wider area. But actually, the great thing about these type of forums is that it's grassroots upwards. And I think that's really, really important because I think that's where the best ideas come from. So rather than being imposed upon people, it is the general public that say, this is really what we want. This is how we think it should be delivered. Chat about it in an open public forum and then present the ideas to the executive so we can implement them on your behalf. And that's what I mean by taking away the politics. OK, cool. That's brilliant. I just I just worry about how we change what's happened before to make sure that all as that many 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 more voices are represented whether it's through the council whether it's through um the forums whether it's through the parishes um i don't really understand the difference between a parish and you know anything else because i don't i don't understand that but um you know just we all need to know what the consequences are of those things but we also need a lot more involvement from people who've never been involved with anything like this before, but have spent their lifetime working in the community. And, the, and I don't, when I've joined other groups for various things, I don't really find that, I'm afraid, I don't. I haven't met any of the people on here, so I'm not talking about any of their forums because they <laughs> seem to be knowledgeable about their communities and, it, and I've been through Westfield I've done some work in Westfield with young people in the past and I've seen the improvements there and it, it looks fantastic I don't feel that's happening in Bath and I'm hoping desperately that this is the start of that happening yeah that's very helpful Shiva thank you ever so much and I mean it, it is very useful sometimes certainly for us as officers who get somewhat blasé on occasions about everybody knows what we're talking about and everybody understands the process and the procedures uh, to get some to get some questions back about well actually what are you talking about um that is that is really very helpful ron you've got your hand up okay um again i got a whole sheave of answers to people various um 
First of all, Sheba. The forums aren't political arenas. We invite councillors along, parish councillors in our case, and um, Baines officials and officers, because they can guide us in our conversations. It's a bit like you saying, I'm really peed off because they don't empty the basket, the, the, the rubbish baskets in my area very often. If you wanted to ring Boris Johnson and say to him, can you arrange for my baskets to be, it wouldn't happen, would it? I mean, and the same applies, Kevin, the Kevin Guy would like to hear from you, I'm sure, and I'm sure he tries to make himself accessible, but they aren't by a set essence, not very accessible. And the officers have a huge task to do on a daily basis. So the forum for our people gives us an opportunity for people to come along and moan, okay? Or, to come along to our forum and come up with a really good idea that they've been stewing on for the last 20 years that we hadn't thought of. Now, if you're a parish councillor, it's a bit easier because we're not Kevin Guy and we're not Boris Johnson. We're the guy that you're likely to meet in a pub or you can ring us or talk to us. And I have, I have parishioners literally leaning over my fence, talking to me about a problem. So please be reassured the forum is an opportunity, it's a conduit for all sorts of people at all sorts of levels to feed their information into a centre of source and then as a group of people decide what's really, really important and focus on those. So, and the other thing was, I really, really don't think that the forum sh should be involved in distributing funds or be financed in any way whatsoever. I believe they should suggest, they should suggest to them, to the people who are listening to them that this be spent on this and find a way of getting the money or not. And if they can't, they tell us. If they can, they do. Simple as that. Sorry to be blunt, but that's the facts. No, that's very helpful, thank you. No, thank you, Ron. And I, and I would just support Ron in that. And I, I think once you start getting down the route of allocating funds and you know supporting projects like that, you, you know, you've, you've, crossed the, you've crossed that line and you therefore your neutrality uh, isn't is isn't as strong. We we used to have in the Chew Valley Forum. We used to have then cabinet members. And we had quite a few cabinet members in the Chew Valley would come along and would ask just as many questions of us as they were, you know, as they as though they were members of the community as well. And I think that's how I would, you, you know, you you think about this. This is more to do with community engagement than political engagement. Politics, start, you know, starts it gets really quite tricky. But actually, if you're engaging with the community, you're actually informing much more what's going on and informing <laughs> then the officers and the politicians who are there can hear what's going on from a community level. So this is about a community forum rather than a rather than a political forum. You have other political forums for doing that. This is about community space and community forum. Uh, Dave, can I just jump so? Yeah. Uh, what what I should just, I mean I, I'm actually a member of the SIL panel. I'm a sort of leftover from the Bath Forum. I, I'm rector of St Michael's in the city. I think on Ron and Chris's country. I think I need to step away then because I, I I from it because I don't. I'm getting more anxious here because there's a democratic deficit, and and um, I, I was sort of doing a holding job, and may I think I need to step away because then um, now it is the majority are councillors in it, so in a sense it is political. Um, it, then you, you've got to come up with a way then of of being more inclusive or, or trying to connect because I don't know how that that works. I, I feel really really uncomfortable actually, particularly on Chris and Ron's contribution then that I shouldn't be doing it then. So um, yeah, we can have another talk that... about that. So yeah, so yeah, uh, Roger, I, I think I think we can we can have a we can we can have a talk about because the panel is fairly representative of. Uh, with councillors and and non-elected representatives, and the non-elected representatives are there for a, a very good reason, and actually fulfil a very important role. Yeah. And often, yeah, the I, thing about I, challenging. But I've got no accountable structure to work to, or to talk to, or to report to. Um, I've been chosen. I wasn't elected, so that that's why I feel uncomfortable. Okay, we can talk about that, Roger. Yeah, definitely. Thank you for raising that. Um, anybody else got anything else? Because I'm just conscious, got. It's quarter past now, and um, there's just one or two little other bits and pieces that we need to talk about, which is basically the draft 
terms of reference, which I think you've all been sent a copy. And they basically mirror very quite quite closely some of the ones for the other area forums. But however, as I always say in these meetings, if there's things in there that you don't like and stuff that you would like to change and you would add or take away, then please go away, have a look at it and bring your views to, to one of the next meetings. But one of the things that we do need to look at and think about is that we will need at some point a uh, a chair to step forward and a vice chair to support the chair at some point to take over the running of some of these meetings because it shouldn't be done, definitely shouldn't be done by somebody like me as an officer of the council. So that is something for somebody to think about. Anybody's got any ideas or questions or things that they want to ask us about what does that involve, then please feel free to speak to Mark or Sarah or I, uh, and we can give you some of the details. Sorry, Saskia, you've got your hand up there. Hi, yeah, I just wanted to ask about the chair and vice chair. Um, will there be any compensation? Um, I'm not asking because I'm interested, I'm asking because um, I want to, I want to get the, the chair and vice chair to, to, to be as diverse as possible and if you don't offer compensation and obviously you get someone, certain people are in a position to do it um, while excluding other people. Yeah, no, that is, you know, that is, that is a really valid point. We've never, we've never really thought about that. And I, you've put, you've put ideas into two people's heads, I can see here, but <laughs> on, Can we back date, on, can we back on <laughs> yeah, I've dated 10 years, Chris. You'll be you'll be you'll be laughing. Um I mean the only benefit, the only benefit for being chair or vice chair at the moment, unfortunately for the individuals, is they get to meet me and Mark on a regular basis. But I'm not sure if that's much of a, uh, that much of a compensation. But no, there isn't, but 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 it is a valid point. And again, around the sort of underrepresentation thing, the other thing that I find interesting, because I sit on the student community partnership for the council as one of the officers, um 25% of the population of Bath are students. And yet, I don't think there are any, many young people here. When I say young, I'm talking sort of under 25. And that, again, is an issue that needs to be looked at because they are a vital, integral part of our community in the city going forward. And they will be, even though they change every three years. And somehow we've got to try and address some of that. Somebody's got their hand up. Malcolm, Malcolm Baldwin. Oh, hi. Sorry to um, sort of break in, which isn't really related to your point at the moment. No, no, that's um, okay. I'm just interested, actually, um, engagement from existing ward councillors, which comes in all sorts of guises and, and of mixed quality. Um, to what extent do those forums which already exist find that using a forum as a conduit worsens or betters that situation. I mean, I certainly find in Bath that we definitely have a, a mixture in terms of quality of engagement, and one would be concerned if that got in any way even worse. I, for example, have some very good councillors and some councillors who perhaps tend to emerge, you know, close to the next election and hear little else from them. Chris, Ron, have you got any views on that? Because you, obviously you've been yeah. dealing with forums for councillors. I think I think for me, I would come back to this point where we are working across a large geography and actually, so I think in our forum, we've got five ward areas now because they change them around when the wards were readjusted. But, you know, we're dealing with things that aren't actually ward specific. We're dealing with things that are area specific. So whether that's transport, whether that's flooding, whether it's education, whether it's health. The fact that the ward councillors come to it, I actually think is actually beneficial from our point of view, because they can then understand and see a bigger picture about what's going on, rather than them having to deal with their own little, you know, with all due respect to Tim and others in, you know, your own little, you know, what's going on in Twerton. It's actually useful for you to know what's going on, you know, in, in Langbridge, for example, or across the other side of, of Bath from where you are, because actually there might be a commonality and there might be alliances that can be built up there. So I would say don't don't get too hung up on those th that side of it, but the ward councillors have always been have always been fully engaged with it and have really yes. gone away, hopefully with their eyes a little bit opened about what's what's actually going on and that's you know one of the things that we try and do, and and we get people coming in from all over the place to talk about different subjects, and I, I know we've had a very small discussion about stuff on Zoom. But for us, we've actually found that more people, 
we had very good attendance rates physically, but they were fairly they Everybody needed to be mobile. Everybody needed to be very comfortable going out late in the evening and stuff like that. Since we've been doing it online, we've actually had more of a diversity of people joining us. Uh, and it's a swing, you know, it swings and roundabouts both ways, I think. Um, but that's one of the things that I would say, and particularly ward councillors, much better attendance from ward councillors when we've been doing it online than when we were physically meeting. Mm. Ron, have you got any other comments you want to make apart from what Chris has said? Yeah, you're muted again, Ron. Yes, I mean, um, we're very lucky in Summer Valley Forum in that we have several ward councillors that are very active in our forum. Um, so I'd say it's useful because they introduce another aspect of opinion and information for people to root to. Um, but generally speaking, um, our meetings aren't really very political and aren't really very centred on, on um, local government, really. They're located on people's problems, and what they expect, their expectations, what disappoints them and so on. So I, I don't... I understand what you're saying, Mark. I mean, it's a bit difficult. I haven't thought about it very much, but um, I, I, think, I think the forums because they are, they are public, or they were before we went to the Zoom, gives ward councillors an opportunity to meet people. And I think, I think it's important for them to have the right um, contact with the public that they're trying to sell to in each five year period. Yeah, the other thing about, about uh, the forums is they outlast elected, uh, elected the, the election patterns. So actually, there's lots of people who have been coming to our forum for 12 years, you know, and we've been through three or four different sorts of administration, but actually the problems are still the same. And actually, or the, the issues that we need to discuss are still the same. And actually, there's a continuity which actually outlives the political uh, makeup of, of, the, of an area as well, which is, which is quite helpful. Yeah, I think I mean I think that's quite a good point, Chris. And again, the other issue I would raise just to add to that is that some of the some of the issues that have been talked about at forums and potentially hopefully at the bar forum are issues that aren't going to be solved overnight mm. or they're not going to be solved in, you know, in, in, in a particular term of office, whatever that may be, in that they're they're ongoing long-term things like, you know, like traffic congestion, like sustainable transport, like um, um, clean air zones, all those bits and pieces, they they're going to be going on into the future. And the forum the forums can pr provide a really useful anchoring point, I think, for an awful lot of activity to go around it. And that's what we're trying to achieve here. Um, I'm conscious of time because we've now got, we have got five minutes left and that is it. And um, so what I've got is um, anybody that's interested in the vice and in the chair and the vice chair's positions the paperwork's gone out if you want to speak to mark or sarah or i then please do and ask us any questions that you like you've got all our details um hopefully mark and sarah will circulate those now the next meeting is not very far away it is on the 8th of september and again it's one of those difficulties with all the forums that occasionally we get bounced by partners into providing opportunities for them to do some consultation because otherwise the opportunity and the consultation wouldn't happen or it would happen in a different way that wouldn't attract so many people. So the next meeting is on the 8th of September and that will be to hear from uh, WECA, which is the West of England Combined Authority, which basically covers Bristol, Bath and North East Somerset and South Gloucestershire about their transport planning along the A4 corridor between Bath and Bristol. They've got some significant sums of money to spend and they've got some ideas that they want to float past people. And again, it's a chance for them to come and listen to people at the grassroots level who are probably using these facilities and who've probably got a view on it. Um, and we've found it very valuable. And it offers, again, an opportunity for you perhaps to influence some change that you think will be positive and for the better for yourselves as individual residents. So that will be the 8th of September, uh, 6 to 7.30. Now, I don't think I've got anything else I want to say. Chairman. We've just got, just got the, sorry, Ron, we've just got the final little poll, but, but, which is only going to take 30 seconds. But then, Ron, you've got something? Yeah, just saying that, um, no, Sarah will probably shout at me for saying this, but we've got a forum meeting coming up and I haven't got my diary here, so I can't, it's the next couple, 10 days, I think, isn't it, Sarah? 
It's the 7th of September. So it next just, Tuesday, week today. It just strikes me that anybody who's interested in seeing what happens in the forum might like to sit on, on in on the Zoom meeting. Definitely. Yeah. Might be useful. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah, we can circulate the details um, of those people that attended to, to join us. We'd love to have you along to the meeting. Thanks, Ron. I'm very happy to have anybody who wants to venture out into the into the wild of the Chew Valley can come to us as well. I don't think we've got haven't got one for quite a while now, have we, Sarah? No. Okay. The only other thing I was just going to say on the voting thing, the only time in that we've ever had a vote in our 12 years of the forum has been on the voting of the chair and the vice chair. We've yeah. never ever voted on anything else. No. And that's a very good point, I think, Chris. And again, it's this thing about we want we, these forums need to be as inclusive as we possibly can. We need just we need people that, you know, and another lady, I know Shiva said about I'm just a resident. Well, actually, you've got a really important role to play because actually you challenge some of the stuff and you ask questions and come at things from a different angle. Um, and then it, we just want to engage some of those people. So if you've got an interest in the climate emergency or parks and open spaces or volunteering or in bloom, we can then work with that and build up those little task and finish groups that can sit underneath the forum. So um, that's kind of what we're trying to do here, which is what we've been doing with the um, with the other forum. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm filling in my um, poll as I'm... Explain the poll. So the poll basically you've got here is that there are only three questions. How often would you like the meetings to be held? You've got a single choice. Uh, which of the following would you like covered as topics for future meetings? And again, there may be something on there may be something on there that you're really interested. It may be stuff that you just think this is all council directed. And actually, I've got some other ideas of my own, in which case we'd be delighted to hear from you to bring those things forward. Um, and again, we've already touched on this, but would you be happy for future meetings to be virtual? And I think partly that partly depends on, A, the number of people that we can expect to turn up to these meetings when they're held face-to-face, -face, where we hold them, and, and not being awful with years of experience with the forums. When it is, if it's in the middle of winter and it's lashing down with rain, maybe a virtual meeting that gets more people there will be more productive than actually trying to get people in their cars, park, you know, getting to the guild hall or getting to another large venue to accommodate people. So um, those are the three questions. So if you'd like to fill some of those in and submit the answers, we may get an instantaneous response, I think we should do. Dave, on question two, there's nothing about what we just talked about, about parishing or about looking at the options, or shouldn't there be that? Because we've actually yeah, no, definitely that come from the meeting, that needs to be there, doesn't it? Yeah, that could be, that could be, that that, that, we, that, will, that one will be included because that will have come up from the grassroots. What we didn't want to do is, I mean, that is a big sensitive topic that's been talked around for 20 years. Um, and maybe now the time is going to be for it, for something to happen about it i don't know but we didn't want to put that in because we didn't want to uh prejudge it and partly just to see whether or not it was raised and interestingly it was one of those issues that was raised almost immediately you know because um it's a large city now of 80 88,000 people and um you know its representation could be enhanced by having another another level of democracy but if it does there are you know, costs and implications with that. Adrian Dolan, you've got your hand up, Adrian. Hey, Dave. Hello. Oh, yeah, you're right. Yeah, very good. Nice to see you. Great, uh, fantastic chairing, I must say. You're, you're very. You're very <laughs> yeah. Anyway, quick question for you. We're trying to engage with the residents of Walcott Street um, to create a residents association. And what what's thinking? Obviously, these are people who would be very, very keen to be involved in such a forum. Yeah. They feel that they're, many of them feel a little bit sort of reluctant to sort of put themselves out there. So uh, I'm just thinking of how we can encourage them uh, to sort of get together, whether there's a way in which you've got somebody who could say perhaps we could, we could call on to create, just have a little sort of um, meeting about how to set one up. Yeah. And then you can sort of, I'm working very closely with, with uh, Tom Davis, who's been very helpful because we've got this yeah. traffic issue down there and all sorts of noise issues and blah, blah, blah. Um, and there's obviously set individual residents study. And um, what we're trying to do is, is trying, to, trying to move things forward um, in order to sort of get everybody together. Uh, I've lost you. Move on. Yeah, no, no, no. 
I'm so, just gonna, yeah, no, yeah. brilliant. I mean, the thing to do is is to is to send me send me and Mark an email, and and we'll come along, and we might bring somebody along who's got um who's actually a chair or a vice chair of an existing residents association, just to give them a feel for 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 the kind of thing that it involves. Brilliant, that'd be fantastic. The other thing was have with this forum, your the Bath Area Forum. It's a big. I mean, it, we know how what's happened before with the, the sort of Bath City Forum, but it's, it's a huge area to sort of consider different issues, isn't it? So yeah. It might frighten people off from being, you know, because it's too big, you know, it's, 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 it's sort of, it's very inclusive. Hello, who's that? Yeah, sorry, this, that. Is being, this is being recorded, so do you mind? Yeah. <laughs> going oh, up the YouTube channel. Um, so the idea being that, you know, it's trying to sort of allay people's fears, give them confidence that it actually will be something, you know, that's that's worthwhile being involved in, that their voice is worth being heard. Yeah. And uh, do you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. to give them confidence on that front, and because yeah. I fear that there's there's a lot of there's a lot of people who feel uh, despondent, reluctant. Yeah. Um, so trying to to increase that. So I will send you an email, and I really okay. appreciate the, the fact that you've got this together. And there's a lot of people that have got a lot of a lot of energy, a lot of passion for this city, and I think it's the time to sort of re-engage with the with pride for this city and getting hold of the residents in this way is is, is fantastic. So yeah. well done. Brilliant. Great no, job. Brilliant. Adrian, thank you very much. If we just look, quickly look at the poll, because we're over time and I hate this. I hate it when we're over time. We've got 36% who went for every two months and we went 40% for every three months. So it's between that two monthly, three monthly. And I think partly that just depends on how much work we've got to do. Uh, we used to run it before every two months. Then we went to every three months. So it's somewhere it's somewhere close between those two, which I think is probably doable because you've got to allow some time for the working groups to do some of the work in between the actual meetings. And then if we just look at the, what are the ones that are coming up tops then? Oh, interestingly, heritage and tourism, 60%, climate emergency, 76%, which I think is going to be the really big thing. And actually how, what do we do as a city, as a group of individuals and residents in trying to deal with some of those issues? Because again, we need to be trying to influence the council and giving the council and the councillors some support and encouragement in 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 looking at some quite difficult decision making um and transport again so that is quite interesting actually uh would you be happy for future meetings to be virtual yes 52 percent a mix with some being face to face 44 percent and i think to be honest it probably might well be it might well be that sort of mixed thing so when it's awful horrible dark damp weather then we may do things virtually um, and then maybe in the summer, we may have a couple of meetings where we can meet in the guild hall. Not to be honest, where we can we can get people in and we can open the windows and everybody's not freezing to death. Um, you know, and we're a bit more comfortable about meeting with other large groups because I know an awful lot of people aren't at the moment. Um, if nobody else has got anything else, then I would like to say a very big thank you to Chris Head and Ron for coming this evening, giving up their time. Uh, and telling us about their particular forums. And I'd like to say a big thank you to Councillor Kevin uh, Guy as leader of the council again for uh, coming and, and supporting us. And indeed all the councillors that I can see here um, on my screen who have come out and supported. And basically the idea would be to go out there and just encourage some of your friends, neighbours, colleagues, whatever, to get involved because we're going to need to be more involved together to drive this forward. Kevin, have you got anything that you want to say just right at the very end? No, thank you. Uh, pers my personal thank you to you and everybody who's taken part. That's a really good opening session. And I look forward to um, this forum developing and coming up with some good ideas. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for your time.